Welcome to the Capital News. I am your host, Alex Kreitas. Today is Wednesday, April 29th, 2020. Thank you so much for joining me. The title of today's podcast is Banana Republic is Here. No surprise to this audience at the Capital News, especially those of you who have been with me for quite a while. We've been throwing this jargon around for quite some time here, Banana Republic. We have gone from a constitutional republic, a very beautiful form of government, drafted, outlined by our founding fathers, a group of brilliant men. It's been completely trampled, completely destroyed in our very faces on a daily basis. This has been taking place for quite a while, not just in the midst of this financial, economic, social, and health crisis, but this has been taking place for generations. It's now just at warp speed. But it's completely gone. It's completely shredded. There is basically no type of law, no type of justice. The charter for the Federal Reserve is being circumvented. What the Federal Reserve is doing is virtually, it is illegal. It is against their charter. And the reason today of all days as to why I am pulling out this title that a banana republic is here is because we had the conclusion of the Federal Open Market Committee, the Federal Reserve's interest rate setting committee. And of course, there was no change. There was no change. So we're still at the zero bound, zero to 25 basis points. That's what we expected. On a real term basis, yes, we have negative interest rates. On a nominal basis, you know, we've made the argument here this week, in fact, that on a nominal basis, while we might not technically see that negative sign in front of the number, it's here. It's a de facto negative rate because of the expansion of the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. And just citing their own research as to what takes place on their balance sheet to the plus side or to the negative side, that will act as a rate cut or a rate hike, respectively. So we have them. We have them, and all of the negative consequences of negative rates are going to follow, as they have in Japan, as they have in the European market. So you have a case study, and you have a case study that's been around for quite a while. It doesn't work. It's not good for the society. It's not good for the financial system. I do not like the financial system that we have in this country, but there are orderly ways to go about dismantling it and putting this country back on a footing of free market capitalism rooted in the rule of law, rooted in a constitutional republic. But the banana republic phrasing is coming out today because during the press conference of chairman of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, he is now of the mindset, which I think was always the case, but now it's, again, there is nobody behind the curtain anymore, okay? It's in our faces, okay? This isn't Dorothy in the yellow brick road and Toto pulling away the curtain. Pay no attention. No, no, he's there. He's looking at you right in the face and telling you what he's going to do. And he doesn't give a damn about the consequences, the legality, the constitutionality. It doesn't matter. The morality, the ethics doesn't matter. Jay Powell, chairman of the Federal Reserve, we don't have to worry about deficits. We don't have to worry about the debt. Now is not the time to worry about these things. You know, he goes up before both houses of Congress twice a year. He was just there. I can't remember if it was March or February. And then he'll go later this fall. What was his concerns last fall? What was one of his major concerns in his most recent meeting? His most most recent testimony? Well, you guessed it. The deficits and the national debt that Congress has to rein it in. And guess who can help Congress rein it in? That's right, the Federal Reserve. Because if the Federal Reserve says, "Uh uh-uh, no way, Uncle Sam, we're not going to monetize this debt, we're not going to get those printing presses started for you, well, then Uncle Sam's got a problem, doesn't he? Because if he goes out to borrow more money, he's going to have to pay a higher interest rate on it, which is what would be taking place. Remember, U.S. Treasuries, for all intents and purposes, are junk. If it wasn't for the Federal Reserve coming in to buy all of this new supply, this new issuance, remember, analysis from Goldman Sachs, is stating that the Federal Reserve is going to be buying 60 to 70 percent of new issuance. Okay, the foreigners are away, sovereigns and individuals, pension funds are out of it because they're not yielding anything, and you have uh, market money market funds, which are pretty much the only other buyer of U.S. Treasuries. So the Banana Republic is already here. The deficits, the debts don't matter. 
Typically, that was the jargon that, you know, you would hear from central bank chairmen as they go up there before Capitol Hill and say, you got to get your act together a little bit. Of course, nothing is ever done, clearly. This is also some rhetoric you will typically hear from Republicans and fiscal conservatives, but, you know, they're, they're, <laughs> their silence is deafening as well. They don't care. The president doesn't care. Secretary of the Treasury doesn't care. White House economic team doesn't care. Democrats most definitely don't care. And now the Federal Reserve doesn't care. So that puts us not in a free market capitalistic system. It doesn't put us in a constitutional republic. It puts us front and center as a banana republic. And, you know, once again, not surprising, and we talked about this a little bit yesterday, you know, none of these journalists, none of these reporters ever ask hard-hitting questions. So we didn't get those again today. There were some decent ones, but there was nothing hard-pressing. There was nothing that was really putting the guy in a corner where he needs to be. Because these actions, again, are immoral, they're unethical, and in my opinion, they're outright illegal. But nobody's up to date on this stuff. Nobody cares. You're getting your $1,200 sit down and shut up money. So everything's fine until it isn't. And that day will come. But that's a process. We will get there, unfortunately. You know, not caring about the debts and the deficit, it all has ramifications. It's all interconnected. And again, if they're not going to care about these things, if they're not going to care about deficits, then why are they taxing us? Why would we continue to be taxed at any rate on anything? Capital gains, dividends, per real estate purchases and sales thereof, income, payroll. It doesn't matter. Why would they tax us? If the, if the deficits don't matter in their opinion, then it doesn't make any sense for them to tax us. So are we on the path towards MMT, modern monetary theory, because that's basically the argument. Deficits and debts don't matter. And the only way and the only reason why you would ever have to tax the public is if inflation started to get out of hand. Then you would have to take some of that money out of the system via taxation, and then everything will cool its heels and we'll be back to normal and they can get the printing presses going again and let the deficits take off once again. And that ridiculous cycle can continue. That's pretty much the trajectory, the path that we are on. That, to me, by definition, is a banana republic. And again, it's laughable, perhaps tragic. Sometimes you got to laugh in the face of these things. We have broke states coming to a broke federal government asking for bailouts. In addition, the federal government doesn't make money. It takes it, and it's going to have to take it from a population that is not working. Thus, the population is broke. So, evidently, the only route that they think that they can go down is the printing press, which is what happens in a banana republic. Now, what we should be doing here in the United States is embracing our roots of our constitutional republic and our free market capitalism and allowing free markets to resolve this issue. It will be painful. It will take time. But what the Federal Reserve is doing, what the federal government is doing, is turning a severe recession into a depression and perhaps a severe depression. Perhaps, possibly, the greatest depression. This is what they did. This is based in historical context, okay? I might have to take the time to read some of that to you from some of the books that I have studied that gives me this type of insight, okay? History might not repeat, but it certainly rhymes, as the saying goes. And we are basically pulling out the same playbook. In fact, much of the same playbook is being used that was used during the depths of the great financial crisis. It's just now being used quicker and to a larger degree. And if you want to see that visually, check us out on thecapitalnews.com. Go to our videos and check out the Fed is buying everything because you can see their balance sheet. And we're going to have to do others on that same topic because this balance sheet is out of control. It's almost at $7 trillion, about $6.5, $6.6 trillion. They claim that they are starting to slow the pace of their purchases down, which may or may not be true. We'll find out, obviously, uh, tomorrow when they publish that data. But as of last week, if we took it from an annualized basis of $200 billion per week, well, on an annualized basis, that's going to take you to a $10 trillion spending spree, which would take their balance sheet to north of $14 trillion. Okay, 
That is preposterous. That is ridiculous. That is criminal, but that is what they are in the process of doing. Now, it's very interesting also because seemingly you have the Federal Reserve who is of the mindset that they are going to be standing at the ready and are preparing to stand at the ready, not for the short term, but for the medium term. Okay, short term is usually one year or less. Medium term is usually one, two, three years. Okay, well, that's not what we're told from the White House. That's not what we're told from the Treasury Department. That's not what we're told from the economic advisors to the president. We're told from those people that this is going to be a V-shaped recovery. Well, somebody's off script here. They both can't be right. So who is it? Who's right? Who's wrong? Is it going to be the White House in the Treasury Department and these economic advisors who say there's going to be a V-shaped recovery in the economy, not just the stock market, but in the economy? Or is it going to be the Federal Reserve who says, no, this is going to take a while? Who do you think is going to win this one out? Because it can't be both of them. Somebody's got to be right. Somebody's got to be wrong in this situation. So the Fed stands at the ready to do as much as possible. The bulk of their purchases, as we understand them, and what we have witnessed as well, is the Federal Reserve is buying U.S. Treasuries across the spectrum, and they are buying mortgage-backed securities. That's where the bulk of their purchases are taking place. This, of course, could change. This could, of course, end up ending up more in the side of corporate debt, junk bonds, that nonsense, commercial paper, maybe start to get more into commercial mortgage-backed securities if and when that market starts to really deteriorate and collapse, which we believe that it will in time. These things take time. It is a process. But when you have 26 and a half million Americans out of work over the past five weeks, yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And I came across an interesting article on Zero Hedge, which is basically an alternative uh, media source uh, that, that, that was citing a survey that says it could be as much as 50 million Americans have lost their jobs over the past six weeks. So basically doubled. And they go through the reasons as to why that could be the case, because a lot of people are overwhelmed and they cannot, they've pretty much given up trying to file for unemployment because they can't get through to anybody. Uh, you have a lot of dated systems across the states, across this country. So everybody is backed up. So there are files in the, you know, claims in the system that have not yet been approved. So there is just this huge, huge backlog of people who are out of work who have just yet to be counted. They've basically doubled it to 50 million. If that's true, that in and of itself is a travesty. But time will play out and we'll see if that comes to fruition. But that was interesting, I thought. Also, during the press conference of the Federal Reserve today, again, the Fed saying they are backstopped. You know, which is, which is us, okay? You have to understand what this backstop is when they talk about this, okay? Because they are backstopped with all of these lending, you know, all of these lending facilities that they have out there. Uh, you know, they pretty much can't lose them being the Federal Reserve because if they lend this money out, it's either going to be paid back, principal plus interest, or if they lose, it's backstopped by the U.S. Treasury. Well, wait a second, folks. Who is the U.S. Treasury? You and me. You and me. So these companies, these big corporations, Wall Street can't lose because the Federal Reserve is going to come to bail them out. But if they still can't generate enough revenue, enough cash flow, and they can't make the Federal Reserve whole again, well, guess what? No worries. You and I get to backstop the Federal Reserve. How do you like that one? You think this is what the founding fathers had in mind? when they created our constitutional republic? I don't think so. In fact, I know so. This is not what they had in mind. But you're getting your $1,200. Sit down, shut up, don't say a thing. And these politicians, they have no backbone. They're all spineless weasels. It's all they are because this is politically convenient for them because the real pain would be the deleveraging that's going to take place anyway. They don't want to come out and say, we can't do this. They don't want to come out and say, debts do matter. They don't want to come out and say, deficits do matter. They don't want to come out and say, the old way of doing things prior to COVID-19, and I don't mean the social distancing and all that crap. I just mean the system that we had was completely unsustainable. 
buying things that you don't need, that you're not going to use, that you can't afford on credit cards is unsustainable. Nobody wants to come out and say this. Yet I think most people in their heart of hearts knows that to be the case. Yet there is no leadership anywhere in the White House, anywhere in this administration, in the Republican Party, in the Democratic Party, nowhere. The only place is in those global protests, and those are starting to heat up once again. A couple of days of protests have been taking place over in Lebanon, burning uh, banks down. These people are starting to starve, which is exactly what we said was going to take place. If it was bad before COVID-19, what do you think is going to happen now? It's only going to get worse these protests are not transitory. They are history in the making. This is going to be a huge political sea change we are in the midst of. You think the nationalistic fervor, you think, you know, the Nigel Farage, the Brexit over in UK, the rise of Donald Trump here, a whole bunch of other things. I mean, it doesn't go either way, right? Because you got Donald Trump and you have the Bernie Sanders wing. It's a coin toss. It's a coin toss. All right. But going with any of them is a joke. Because nothing is going to change so long as you continue down that mindset. Again, the solution is already in front of us. It's simply restoring our constitutional republic, our true rule of law, and free market capitalism. Shouldn't be difficult to do in this country, but since we are now a banana republic, I think it's going to be quite difficult. Time will play out. But that's the Federal Reserve. Medium term, there's not going to be a V-shaped recovery as far as they're concerned. That's not what they're predicting. They are going to be backstopped. They don't care. They will give money to everybody and their mother. Of course, you got to know them. you got to know them. Otherwise, all you're getting is $1,200, but everybody else is going to get millions and billions and trillions. That's how it works. Other news that came out today, GDP for the first quarter of 2020 contracted by 4.8% contracted by 4.8%, the largest decline since the great financial crisis. But lo and behold, the markets rallied today. And is it just a coincidence? Come on, ladies and gentlemen, you're not this stupid. That Gilead, that science, that pharmaceutical company, biotech firm, that was in the news about a week and a half ago, where there might be some promising trials when it comes to COVID-19. Right, That was short-lived because then when you just read a few paragraphs below, you said, oh, well, it's not that great. Yeah. Well, they too are back in the news on the same day that the GDP number is printed and negative 4.8% is worse than what markets were anticipating. So lo and behold, just a coincidence, I'm sure of it. I'm sure this is just a coincidence that Gilead puts out another news alert and their trading was actually halted by the exchanges today based off of this news that there is promising news that their therapy is going to work on COVID-19. Can't make this stuff up. Cannot make this stuff up. Can you talk about a rigged fixed game? I mean, it's just too many coincidences. But nevertheless, look, market performance, they just took off. Took off, up a few percentage points across the board. The Russell 2000 was up about 4%, 5%. I mean, you can't make this stuff up, folks. Right now, the futures are trading. Dow Jones is up 7 tenths of 1%. The S&P 500 is up about 1%. NASDAQ 100 is up 1.9%. It is now trading, and this is a NASDAQ 100, is now north of 9,100 points. It's almost back to where it was before all of this started. The other thing that the Federal Reserve stated, which again tells you that we're in a financial world of awe as in a banana republic, is that... Jay Powell told us, he said, we are going to see numbers in the second quarter that we have never seen before. And he doesn't mean good. He doesn't mean good. He's talking negative numbers, manufacturing, industrial production, durable goods orders, unemployment, GDP, everything, everything. Markets don't give a damn. They're up three, four, five percent. And now overnight, the futures are up. It's ridiculous. Japanese markets are trading. They're up almost 600 points representing an increase of 2.9% at the time of this podcast across the pond in Europe. Exchanges were up across the board 2 to 3%. And right now, the Australian exchange is also up 124 points, representing an increase of 2.3%.
On the commodity front, big rally once again in the price of crude. We got WTI trading at $17.46 a barrel. Brent is at $24.92 a barrel. Natural gas, relatively flat and overnight, is trading at $1.87 per million British thermal units. Gold and silver are trading relatively flat. Gold at $1,711 an ounce. Silver at $15.26 an ounce. Let's see here. Uncle Sam's U.S. 10-year Treasury note yielding 0.62%. So it doesn't matter. Keeps going up. Worse than expected GDP figure. Federal Reserve comes out and says we're going to see the worst numbers we've ever seen in the second quarter. That's forward-looking. Markets are supposed to be forward-looking. Apparently, they've already factored that in, and now they're just going to continue going higher because the headline from Gilead Science, and I guess because the Federal Reserve says they're going to continue to print money and because deficits and debts do not matter. But be on the lookout for another capital economics presentation. I think I'm going to put one together for uh, the trade deficits, which we talked about briefly yesterday, but also the national debt and national deficits as well, just so you have a visual and you can make it up for yourself if you think it matters or not. I think it does. You can disagree, but at least you'll have a visual. Some other negative news, but the markets completely shrugged this off and they all traded up. Boeing is expected to lay off 10% of its workforce. Lyft, the ride-sharing company, is expected to lay off 17% of their workforce. And Uber, the other, you know, same company basically, drive-sharing firm, is expected to perhaps cut up to 20% of their workforce. And these aren't the drivers, folks. Those are independent contractors. Those, those people aren't technically on the books of Lyft and Uber, okay, on these ride-sharing companies. These are corporate jobs. These are corporate jobs. Now, I'm sure some of them might be lower-level administrative jobs, but nevertheless, a lot of these are going to be corporate. So now you're starting to get into the bigger money. And a lot of this is the case with Boeing as well. Some of those are buyouts and other things that's taking place. But this is just painting the broader picture, that this is just the tip of the iceberg. And of course, on the back of this news, all of these stocks were up for the day. Some of them big. People losing their jobs, Wall Street rallies. This is a sickness, but this is what's taking place. Completely decoupled, completely devoid of any type of humanity. People starving to death, and we're euthanizing millions of chickens, hundreds of thousands of hogs. All this type of stuff is going on. Farmers destroying crops in the field. None of it makes sense. Not in the United States of America. These are the, this is the type of stupidity that you would expect from a banana republic. That's exactly what we would expect. This is the type of stuff that we would expect from Zimbabwe or Iran or Venezuela. That's the type of stuff we would expect. Not here in the United States of America. But that's exactly what is taking place. So the market performance, stocks keep going up again. This has been a big retracement. I still believe we are in a bear market. You have some of the strongest counter rallies in bear markets. So that's not overly surprising. But with this litany of data that just keeps coming across the news wires, the reality, markets are supposed to be forward looking. 20 Six and a half million Americans out of work over the past five weeks alone. And that does not count the people who were already out of work before that. And these markets don't give a damn. They just keep going and going and going. Now, again, that comes to that retracement factor. We, have, we are hitting some key technical levels. We'll see if this turns out to be resistance and we get a bounce to the downside. If we get a rejection and we go back down. Or perhaps we bust through it, and then what was once resistance now becomes support, and we make another run higher, which we're not too far away from where we were prior to that 30-35% market collapse. I guess when the Federal Reserve prints $2 trillion, when the federal government spends trillions of dollars over the course of a couple weeks, this is what you get. Is it free? Hell no, not even close. We will be paying for this on the other side. We will be paying for it dearly in the form of inflation, stagflation, or perhaps even hyperinflation. And when we do those presentations on the deficits and the debt, you're going to understand 
why there is no such thing as a free lunch. Thank you so much for joining me today, ladies and gentlemen. Again, Banana Republic is here. Please like, share, subscribe, get the word out, leave your comments. We do love hearing from you. Stay diversified, stay vigilant, and stay with the Capital News. I am Alex Caritis. Godspeed.